Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Q&A Friday. Um, I wanted to jump in here quickly. So if you're listening live, give me a hello. Um, we're going to speak today about a question that has been coming through in the emails in my private sessions for a while about how do you resolve conflict in a way that is a win-win solution um, for both parties. And I, I certainly have been going through a lot of that in my own practice this week. And the answer is through really expanding our own internal awareness to be the inner observer of what body sensations are being triggered by unresolved childhood trauma or other trauma patterns perhaps around betrayal or um, loss of trust in, in your adult relationships. And uh, what came up for me was to really remember that a lot of people come into our lives to, to teach us not to, not to be like them. Um, I love that Oscar Wilde saying that says some cause happiness wherever they go and others um, whenever they go. So I think boundaries it is a very important part of all of this and to also stay connected to your own inner compass of your own value system and your um, inner knowing, your intuition um, that Culturally, we're not taught, you know, we're taught to give the person another chance or um, to turn the other cheek. And I think that's where we get really confused and, and go horribly wrong. And yes, there is a blessing in all the lessons and even the people that antagonize or um, really rile us um, are there to teach us something. Um, even though it may feel very uncomfortable or um, just something that you really want to go away from, I always ask, you know, what is, what is it that is, is, is being triggered in me that I can learn from? And, and know that every, everything, every interaction, every um, encounter is there to give us this ability to, to trust our own um, expanded awareness of either we're contracting or we are an expanding or either we're expanding into what else is possible or we're contracting into the old stories and into the old victimology of, of some of the archetypes like the wounded healer and um, I think that if we just push pause something that I have constantly got to learn because when you're in trigger and you see red that inner wounded child that is afraid is going to lash out and oftentimes we do things or say things that we regret later on so I am um, just be aware of that and be gentle with yourself because this is a is a place of inner viewing of inner awareness and we don't often get to to do that in the moment right oftentimes it comes afterwards in the lesson and Viktor Frankl, I think, said something really, I just love the guy um, when you talk about resilience, but he, he said that everything in life is potentially important and that we can learn lessons from the things that make us suffer. I also posted something from my other um, nervous system hero, Gabor Mate, earlier that says we're not traumatized in the event, we're traumatized in how we don't process the, the event after the fact. So I think sometimes we can, you know, not only find the meaning of certain negative, negative in brackets, um, relationships, because there is no good or bad or right or wrong. It's the meaning that we put on it. Um, every, every opportunity is going to give us um, a learning experience, a vision of the world that was previously unknown to us, right? Our inner relationship so another way of sort of saying that is that it brings um, it brings those experiences up to teach us what to value what our integrity is what our moral com compasses and what brings us only suffering and back to that power of choice that we get to choose to either live in a beautiful life or to choose um, to live in a suffering state so Everything is there to grow us and evolve us or to shut us down and the choice is ours um, to look at, you know, what do we want in our lives and what are we asking of life 
and also to know that we are contributing to life and what we want and don't want as well in our beautiful concerns about the things that matter and move us that we see as injustices. So just be flexible with this. I think our principles and our sort of moral compass, our point of views are often solidified um, because of certain experiences that we've been through that brought up suffering or discomfort or trauma. And when we've been witnesses of injustices um, and we're feeling that great discomfort that's caused by, by the behavior of others or by the behavior of ourselves where perhaps we're feeling shame or blame or um, guilt or some other form of um, destructive implant, remember destructive implants are all those sort of lower vibrational frequency systems that keep us in those patterns of attachment, right? The patterns to defend and protect, but they also help us to really expand that inner awareness to look at, well, you know, what are my principles and are they reinforcing my beliefs that are no longer serving me or are they growing me? beyond that and I think deception and coldness and self-centered centeredness there is a level of harm there in the narcissism of it but as children we are born narcissists right we're born to be um, self-driven in getting what we want so I think we have to be very aware of what we're spelling into being through our words um, and I think sometimes the best thing is that when when you can't recognize the people who who are once surrounded you, that, that there are people who end up showing what and who they really are, showing their true colors and when they no longer need us and that they don't even try to hide it in those sort of classic codependent and narcissistic relationships. When that happens, that pain itself is always going to make us reassess, right? Re-evaluate um, and then integrate what is my priority and what, what am I putting out into the world in my behavior towards other people? Is it coming from a place of love or is it coming from a place of hurt and harm? And I think that for that reason, sometimes experiencing painful or, or um, difficult, bad situations make us better people. If we can expand ourselves out of that and be the, the silent witness almost, um, to not have an emotional attachment to it, which is part of the mystery of being human and the mastery of, of learning how to be a good human. And I think all of that really requires us to do the best we can on the internal job, you know, to not compare our insides to other people's outsides in a moment-by-moment -moment presencing, which is going to always allow us that power of choice to move forward and not um, go back into the... The contraction or of seeing it as a weakness or or dissatisfaction and to really start to shape a clear vision for how do I want my life to look so sometimes that does mean that we have to do what is not always comfortable and if you are one of those that are very avoidant in their attachment style or anxious um, disorganized where you've been people pleasers and you've given up your voice for such a long time, it's not always easy to um, set strong boundaries or to remove people who are not there for your highest, greatest good, that are creating problems for not only your health, but for your soul. And when we just take that little step, one step at a time, when we start to move away from the people that we hurt us, um, that's good because it, it, it gives us an advantage um, to see the reactions and to see the intent for what it is by using that inner vision exercise that I guided you through yesterday. I'm going to take you a step deeper into this at the end of, of, of my, my, my Friday rant to this question. So um, just know that, you know, disappointment comes when we know what, what people are doing they're doing because it works for them, right? They're choosing to be a certain way. They are using manipulation to get what they want. So if you know who they are, then there is no disappointment, right? There's only awareness of, okay, do I want to be a part of this or do I want to move away from this? And it allows us to then start to be in a different space 
um, with others because now we, we're seeing it without the filters on. We're seeing that whatever that is, is what they're choosing and that there's nothing that you can do to change their point of you know it's not up to you to change their point of view it's up to you to just be aware of what they're choosing and when we kind of do that it 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 gives us a sense of um claiming back our power because we can see what those people are doing and then you can start to focus on the lessons that you are maybe drawing from what you're experiencing and then helping yourself to create opportunities for your own growth because you can't make somebody else grow, right? Um, it, it's an opportunity for you to work on your own self-confidence and your own intuition and your own internal resourcing from a place of what makes you feel safe and what doesn't. And um, it really is a lot more simple um, to look at it from maintaining a, 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 a wider viewpoint or a perspective that's going to help you achieve a certain um, indifference. It doesn't mean not having empathy. It doesn't mean that you don't care, but you're no longer entangled in the web of lies or the web of deceit that somebody else is choosing to operate from. And then you don't have to get sucked down back into the crab pot to climb down that sort of emotionally unstable mountain with them. Um, it just allows you to start to separate from what what is yours. So asking, who does this belong to? Is this mine? Is there something to learn from? And if you get an energetic no, then move away. You know, there is no um, in-between space. There is no either or reality. It's either this or that and everything in between. And when you can start to see from other people's points of views, then you get to be free of the insecurity of being judged or rejected or disowned when actually you don't want to be in that space of pretense belonging. So the idea is to really crystallize your ideas and expose your thoughts and emotions without fear of consequences, to act as if it's already happened. And I think that's a beautiful way it, to, to practice this daily, to, to really give you a very quick and direct and at the same very satisfactory response, right? To get the results that you want. Um, and then you're not in a reductionist place of thinking that you have to solve or fix anybody else's problems. You can just live in a place that's gonna create the most peace and mind, peace of mind for you. So just know that when somebody tries to intentionally harm you, then you have to choose whether you want to leave your emotional windows, right, leak your energy out, or bring your energy back, be sovereign to yourself, and, and leave the places that are suffocating and draining you. Life is way too short um, to be worried about other people's agendas. Just be aware of it. Expand your level of tolerance, expand your level of intuition, and trust what you know, like you know, and if you don't know, ask what do you need to know in this situation um, so that you can uh, distance yourself from things that are not, not for your highest, greatest good. Um, and then you start to get closer to what makes you feel, feel um, more at peace, more aligned with your own inner compass and, and to, to, to move toward what you're asking for rather than than away from, from the very thing you know that is just gonna create that same pattern of repeat, repeat pattern of abuse that just has a, a guise or a face of, of something else. Nice to see you here, Paula. So um, I like to celebrate, you know, ask you what's one thing that you're celebrating in belonging to yourself this week? You know, what's one brave, small action step that you've taken to reclaim your power and, and really trust your own intuition. Um, it's been a bumpy week for, for many of us. And, and yes, there's a lot of recall. There's a lot of um, completion of old ancestral and relationship, 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 relational trauma, especially around family woundings that's been coming up for many of us this week. And, um, you know, again, when you expand that intention of awareness 
to learn from your ancestors, to learn from the entities that are perhaps hanging around your space. I spoke about this a couple of days ago. Don't be so hasty to, to ask them to leave. Um, they will become very insistent, just like your own in, inner wise woman. Um, until you get the lesson, they will relent, be relentless in, in showing up in your space. So why not ask your entities, your ancestral helping spirits, um, your guides and the powers that be to support you in showing you what it is that you need to see that might be in plain sight that you haven't been able to see um, because you've been looking too far out into the distance. And, and then thank them, thank them for the lesson. And let them know, you know, they no, they no longer have bodies and, and, and that they can leave. Um, you'd be surprised how quickly they'll do that. So, uh, big breath. Um, I've been going for almost 15 minutes already. So, I want to just take you through the next part of, um, of that guided process to, to activate your third eye, to activate your thymus, right, your intuitive process. Um, from a place of, for, of, a, of excitement, not from um, fear. Uh, the kidney 27 lies right underneath the thymus and I guided you through this first process of um, removing the veils, um, decalcifying the pineal gland so that you can really start to use your inner vision um, to your advantage. Um, so if you didn't listen to yesterday's uh, Facebook Live, uh, go back and listen to that guided process or trust what you know and, and just stay with me. I'm gonna just take you through a very simple process right now to um, be able to, to do some of this um, conflict resolution from being, um, turning your inner projector, right? There's a part of the, uh, at the back of the brain that actually is called the projector. And we're going to turn that inward today. So just take some nice um, deep breaths, turn off any distractions that you may have going on around you and just give yourself permission to be here now with me. And get yourself into a comfortable position. Feel the chair that you're sitting on, feel your feet on the ground, send out those beautiful tap roots to connect to Gaia, to Mother Earth. And then bring the energy up, your divine line, up, up through your crown chakra. Expanding out into an eighth dimensional energy frequency. Activating all of your chakras. And now, just by your one command, by your intention, Use your inner vision to see the people, the guides, whether they're your beloved animal companions, maybe they're mentors, maybe they're friends or allies on this journey in raising consciousness on the planet. Maybe they're the ones that surround you in your home, in your sanctuary, in your workplace and in your closer circles and just allow the light emanating from your inner eye of awareness to just wash over them with this beautiful new wealth frequency, this beautiful code of love, to love whatever arises. And just allow that beautiful, warm, loving energy to radiate out, to reach all the people, including the ones that may have been antagonizing or provoking you. See the gift, the blessing in the lessons that they have shown you in what you don't want. And just allow your third eye to expand giving you a very clear vision of each of these people in their highest and most authentic state of being. And I want you to think of a person 
that maybe you have been having a conflict with that maybe is making you very angry or upset. And if you can't think of one in your now moment, think of somebody in your past that perhaps you still have some unresolved conflict with. And just see that person standing ahead of you in your mind's eye while you maintain this heart-to-heart -heart connection, you're seeing I. And I'm bringing in a sacred geometric symbol right now. I'll post that in the comment below. See El Sadiq, the all-seeing, all-knowing I. And I want you to keep your eye of awareness open and expanded. And I want you to bring up the story of what is this, what was this conflict about for you? And what are you struggling with in, in making peace with it? Or forgiving yourself, forgiving the person. Remember, we don't have to forgive the behavior. And if you have a notepad next to you, write down how is this conflict affecting your life? How is it draining your energy? And just allow this beautiful illumination from your subtle sense of eyes, your all-seeing eye of awareness, amplify right now. Send more light, more of this loving diamond platinum ray of healing light. Permeate every cell of your body and reaching out, permeating every cell and the space in between the other person so that you can see who they truly are in their heart of hearts with their emotional body, their personality, their physical form, the child parts inside that are holding some of these attachment patterns that are maybe projecting and going into assumption from them to you and you to them. And allow spirit to support you in seeing every detail of this conflict with sharp, accurate focus and knowing. And from their point of view, can you see how this conflict has been affecting them? How is it affecting their life? This hostility, this hurt, this distrust between you between them and you. And just trust that this all-seeing illumination of your inner viewer, your projector, your eye of all-knowing, has the ability to cut through any confusion any stuck thoughts and emotions, any projections, expectations, separations, decisions, judgments, and conclusions about any and all of whatever this conflict was, to just shed new light on this issue or challenge that lies between you. What do you see as this movie plays out in your mind's eye, in your heart's knowing. What do you sense? What do you feel? And you can just free write anything that maybe comes up or open your eyes and write that down. And now using your 
inner remote viewer from your clear sightedness, your eye of pure knowing, seeing and being. You might experience some immediate release. Maybe you're feeling your energy coming back in as you call it in. Maybe you just feel lighter. I invite you to write that in the comments after this. I'd love to know. And you might just see a different way to approach this problem or a new choice that was previously obscured from your view, from your, <coughs> your point of creation when you created this idea that there was conflict. Perhaps there wasn't even any. Maybe this was just a projection of an old wounding that was coming up for you to heal. So just take your time. There's no need to, to rush this process. And just recognize where you are focused on your connection <coughs> excuse me, to this beautiful, great inner central sun that's connecting you with mother sun, mother, mother moon and father sun, grandfather sun, to the great central molten lava core of the earth below, to the illumination of your spiritual sun, your eye, of awareness, your intuitive and spiritual vision. And from this expanded viewpoint of illumination, what is possible for you from this space, from this vantage point between the two of you in this moment? And in the future, just allow yourself to feel your connection to the awareness itself. Know that it is dependable and trustworthy and solid because it is coming from your highest, greatest part of you that sees this conflict with, with the love that a mother would have of a, of a child that is learning new things. And when you're in the dark, when you're confused or, or feeling clouded with negativity and projections and assumptions, your desirable futures, what you are intending to see this person meet you with love in a win-win situation are often limited or impossible to come by. So just take a moment, feel the joy of empowerment, knowing that you have the power of choice to move this forward into right relationships. Maybe you need to say, I'm sorry and mean it. Ask yourself, what does this person need from you in order for this to be resolved with love? And what if this was you that created some damage? What, what does this person need from you? Just notice what comes through. It might be a word, might be a photograph, a picture in time of when things were joyful and expansive between you. Just take, take a moment to just allow the remote viewing of your inner eye to come back and settle in your heart. 
knowing that it's always there for you to expand out to anyone or anything in any given moment. And from now, just carry that with you. Um, wherever you go, it's yours. It's your illumination. It is your gift and contribution to yourself and to everybody that you touch. Know that you can access that at any time. And that it'll always amplify this sort of tense and release, this pressure from your field so that you can bring, call back your energy from all the places where you're making yourself wrong or another person wrong. And I hope that you will let me know how or if this has allowed you to have some clarity in using this as an incredibly simple and intense healing energy for you because the I is yours to connect with. Uh, it is part, it's part of you. And in case nobody told you today, I see you, I honor you on your journey and I celebrate your life and your contribution and for being part of my world because we can grow so much further together than we can apart. And we, we need, as I said, we need um, people to trigger us as a gift, right? See it as a gift. And know that the power of choice is yours in, in how you use it for your highest, greatest good and the good of others or you lose it. So have a great weekend wherever you are. Bye.